God, you really scared me half to death. Oh, you can't do that, you know? I couldn't sleep, so I was going to do some wash, but you're kind of in the way, you know? So I want you to go upstairs. Go on. Go on. You can't stay with me. Go have some breakfast. Go on. Cue ball, what have you done now? It's okay. It's okay. You just, you just had a bad dream. Oh, oh my God. What happened? Um, there was this, um, I don't know, I don't know. It was, it was so real. You're starting to scare me. This is like the third time this month. I know. I'm sorry. Daddy, Mommy, are you all right? Oh, yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay. Mommy just had a bad dream. It's okay. Let's go back to bed, okay? Scarlett, you sure look pretty today. So, are you going to a prom or something? No, we're taking yearbook pictures at school today. Hey, Tom, how come we never had teachers who look like this? Flirting with my wife again. No, just just make an observation. See you tonight, okay? Come on, we're going to be late. You really do look pretty. Yeah. I'm going to be home late, remember? All right. Wheels on the bus from the beginning again, and I want to see you move your hands this time, John. The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. Um, I'm gonna step outside for a minute, okay? Cause I get some fresh air. Janet, can you take over? Sure. So Bernie and his guys spend all week putting in this custom insulation. The owner shows up and says the specs are all wrong. I hate this stuff. Me too. Oh, come on. Have a little bit of it. It's good for you. Do you have to replace it? Bernie already started ripping it out. I don't know who will end up paying for it. Here, I'll take some of that. Oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, um, I'll be right back. Go on. My mommy's right. Eat some of that. Honey, are you all right? I'll be okay. I think I have a touch of stomach flu. When do you think you're gonna fix the drywall in the hallway? As soon as I get a check of free time. How about the new molding over the door? Right after I finish the drywall. <laughs> Uh, you spent $128 at a shoe store? I had to buy the girls new sneakers, remember? What are they, gold-plated? That's what they cost nowadays. 
the price of things, it's outrageous. Mm. You're warm. I just took some aspirin. I want you to go see a doctor. You haven't been sleeping well, bad dreams, now this. I think it's just one of those 24 hour things. Don't be stubborn. You've got a half a day tomorrow. I want you to go see a doctor. Okay? Yes, sir. <laughs> You know why I've been nauseous and not sleeping? You're pregnant. What? You're about two months along, so you should be delivering around July 4th. Well, that's impossible. Tom had a vasectomy after Jessica was born. <laughs> well, it may be impossible, but you are pregnant. This can't be right. What are you doing here? Are the kids all right? The kids are fine. Is there some place that we can talk in private? Uh, yeah, sure, in here. Something happened at the doctor's today? Honey, what is it? You're, you're scaring me. What's going on? Guess what? What? I'm pregnant. No, there's no way. Yep. Well, how could that have happened? That's what I asked the doctor. And she said that there's obviously something wrong with your vasectomy. Well, they told me it was 99.9% .9 effective. Yeah, well, we got the one-tenth of one percent. Well, this is, of all the things in the world, to screw up. It was an accident. There's no point in beating ourselves up about it. So what are we going to do? I guess we're going to have a baby. Maybe it's a boy. You always said you wanted a son. Oh, hey. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. It's just, just such a shock. I know. But we'll get through it, okay? What's that all about? Honey just found out she's pregnant. Pregnant? I thought you had all the lead taken out of your pencil. So did I. Listen, tell the chief I went home sick. And where are you going? Just cover for me, okay? Spoon. S-P-O-O-N. Store. S-T-O-R-E. That's my girl. <laughs> How's she doing? 10 out of 10. Great. Where's Jessica? Here. <laughs> Come here, sweetheart, and let's sit next to your sister, because Mommy and I have something very important to talk to you about. We're not going to move again, are we? No, nothing like that. You see, Mommy went to the doctor today and found out that she's going to have a baby. Which means that we're going to have either a little brother or a little sister. Now, that's going to change a few things around here when the baby comes. But we still have a little wild plan. I'll get it. So what do you think? Would you rather have a little brother or a little sister? Sister! Okay, but don't tell Daddy because he's got his heart set on a little boy. You sure? Why do you want a sister instead of a brother? Because sisters are nicer than brothers. Oh, they are. Who was that? We'll talk about it later. Okay, Munchkin, it's time for a hot bath and then bed. Come on, let's go. Okay. Woo! Meet you there. I'll be you. No, I'll be you. Are they in bed? Yeah. I'm gonna go kiss them goodnight. They're fine. We need to talk. What's the matter? That phone call that came in earlier tonight, it was from the urologist who performed my vasectomy. Guess what he said? What? There's no problem with my vasectomy. It's 100% effective. 
That's impossible. He did test, Connie. I saw him this afternoon. There's no sperm in my semen. He said I could not be the father of your child. What the hell is going on here? I don't know. I'm either your test is wrong or I'm not really pregnant. There's no other possible explanation. No, there's not. No. Let's assume for a minute that I am pregnant. There are no assumptions here, Connie. Trust me, you are pregnant. Okay, then is it possible that Tom's sperm count could have been thrown off by something? I don't know, but after we do these tests, we'll have all the answers. Now just lean all the way back and relax. It's not going to hurt. Connie, are you all right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. No, no, it was just some routine testing. Yeah, the roofers will need that sheet metal. I'll pick it up on my way back. Uh, listen, uh, I gotta go, okay? Yeah, thanks. I'm afraid I have some bad news. Both Tom's blood semen test and your fetal exam show that Tom could not be the father of this child. What? What do you mean, show? Well, I really mean prove. There is no margin of error here. What I've said is an absolute medical certainty. I'm sorry. I had the test results copied. If I can answer any other questions for you. No, thank you. I'm sorry. Tom, I have never been unfaithful to you. Don't add insult to injury. Tom, I'm telling you the truth. Did you hear what the doctor said? Absolute medical certainty. Absolute. I don't care what the doctor said, Tom. I don't even know what is going on here. I have never slept with another man. I gotta get back to work. Tom, you have to believe me in this. Tom, please! For the past couple of weeks, I've had a dream. It's a nightmare, really. Where a man wearing a stocking breaks into my house and rapes me. I have to believe that this is somehow connected to this pregnancy. And that's why Dr. Abrams suggested that I come and talk to you. Are you saying you think you got pregnant through some kind of psychosomatic experience? No. I'm not that crazy. At least not yet. Good. At the time that Dr. Abrams says I conceived, my husband was away. Now, what if someone broke into my bedroom and raped me, and I was so traumatized that I blocked it from my memory? That's why I think that these recurring nightmares where I'm violated by a stranger are tied in. Do you think I'm crazy? No. No, there have been cases as unusual as this. My initial response is that you should undergo hypnosis. But first, I'd like you to talk to an investigator we work with at the district attorney's office. He'll be able to tell you if there have been any rapes or sexual assaults in your neighborhood. His name's Ray Boyle. He's in the office after two. I'll brief him before you call. Okay. Don't worry, we're going to get to the bottom of this. Thank you. We talked to this detective and what do you have to say? He said there were no incidents in the neighborhood. But he would check citywide. And in the meantime? I guess I have to be hypnotized. That's not what I meant. What about the baby? I am not, under any circumstances, having an abortion, Tom. What are you going to do? I'm going to have the baby. Put it up for adoption. There are a lot of couples out there. What do I tell our kids? Our family? Our friends? The truth? I didn't do anything wrong. You really think they're going to believe that? I wouldn't care as long as you did. 
Don't you walk away from me, Connie. You're making us sound like I'm some kind of insensitive jerk. You think you could not talk so loud? You're carrying another man's baby. And all you can say to me is, trust me, I, I don't know what happened. Maybe I was abducted by space aliens. I think that any reasonable person would think that I'm entitled to my doubts. This is not about doubts, Tom. This is about trust. Thank you for seeing me on such short notice. Sure, no problem, my pleasure. I wasn't sure that you would remember me. Uh, you had two impacted wisdom teeth, am I right? Right. I'll never forget an x-ray or a pretty face. Now, you said that you had an emergency. Yeah, it's, um, it's not what you would expect. I just need to talk to you. Okay, sure, that sounds easy. Let's just uh, go over here in my office. Can I get you a cup of coffee or mineral water or anything like that? No, I'm not fine, thank you. Okay, yeah, just have a seat there. Let me just... Okay. Now, what uh, can I do for you? Around the time that you performed my oral surgery, I became pregnant. Oh, well, congratulations. But my husband is not the father, and I've never been unfaithful. Well, uh, I wouldn't say that that's an emergency. I'd say that's a medical miracle. I believe I was raped, doctor. You believe you were raped? I know that sounds completely crazy, but I have racked my brain trying to figure out how or where this could have happened. And since I don't remember, the only logical explanation is that it happened here. It happened here? When I was knocked out under anesthesia. Mrs. Loftus, did you come here to accuse me? No, 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 please, no, I'm not, I'm not saying you did it, no. Well, then I, I think you should tell me exactly what you're saying, then. I was knocked out before and after the surgery. This is a very busy facility. There are a lot of people coming and going, maybe a maintenance man or a lab technician or someone could have gotten into the recovery room. Mrs. Loftus, nothing like that could ever happen or would ever happen in my office. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. This is not going to hurt. Are you okay? You... Excuse me? You know what happened, don't you? Mrs. Loftus, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to leave, okay? You know you're a very attractive woman. It was you. Elsie, would you come in here for a minute, please? Yes, sir. I think your next visit should be to a psychiatrist. Elsie, get me Ron Eichen, please, the uh, private investigator who worked with my divorce. Sure.
Give me your social security number again, would you please, doctor? All right. Zero four zero one. Ron, the woman is certifiable. I mean, she comes in here and she tells me she's had this dream that she was raped in my office and she can't remember anything. You're kidding. No, I'm not kidding. And God knows what kind of trouble someone like this can cause, you know? Listen, don't worry, doctor. I'll get on it right away. Thanks, Ron. I appreciate it. All right. Bye. When I first spoke with Detective Boyle, I thought that maybe I had been raped in my house. And then I remembered this oral surgery. Well, did you have any relationship with this dentist either before or after the surgery? Just the initial consultation and then the surgery. He was the specialist referred by my regular dentist. Any previous complaints against him? Just a few routine malpractice things, nothing of a sexual nature. Are you willing to take a lie detector test? Yes. Do you reside in Washington State? Yes. How long have you been married? Eight years. During those eight years, did you ever have an extramarital affair or engage in any kind of sexual activity with anyone outside of your husband? No. Within the last two months, were you artificially inseminated with the preserved sperm of your husband or another man? No. Did you ever meet Dr. Roger Knowlton prior to your first visit to his office? No. Did you ever How's she doing? Not a blip, especially about never having an affair. Well, just remember, a true psychotic can beat a polygraph. <laughs> I think she's telling the truth. So do I. Why don't you let me go out and talk to this dentist? See if he'll agree to take a blood test. No. Okay. You be careful. I have a feeling this one's a real can of worms. Doctor, Ron Isham's on line two. Yeah, Ron. I just heard there was a little marital discord a few months back. The husband moved out for a while, but then they patched things up. Sounds like they've had some money problems. Yeah, that's just what I figured. So, so you think we're looking at a shakedown here, Ron, or what? Well, it could be, Doctor. But don't worry. I'll keep digging. Okay. Thank you. Boyle. I'm an investigator with the district attorney's office. I apologize for showing up like this, but I figured it was better than coming to your office. What's this all about? Well, as I think you know, one of your former patients, Mrs. Thomas Loftus, has made an allegation. So Connie went through with it. She actually went and called the police. Again, sir. From our standpoint, this is merely an allegation. We have no interest in embarrassing you or... I can't believe this. I really can't believe this. Well, that's why we thought that if you volunteer to take a blood test, we could resolve this matter. Detective, I'd be happy to take a blood test. I'd be happy to do anything you want me to do. The fact of the matter is, I may be the father of Connie's child. I told her if I was, I'd be willing to accept my responsibilities, but I'm sure she didn't mention that to you, did she? Can we back up here a second? Connie and I had a very brief, very passionate affair. Now, she told me she was getting a divorce and she was using birth control. Now, yesterday, yesterday she barges into my office and she starts talking about blackmail. Today, you're here and now she's crying rape. Let me tell you something. Don't be fooled by this woman. That's all I can say. Okay. Is there anything else you want to ask me? <laughs> no. Thanks for talking to me. Okay. All right. Okay, I'm touch. Okay. Detective Boyle? Ma'am? Come on in. Uh, I think it might be better if we talked outside. Okay. 
What did he say? Well, he made no attempt to deny that he might be the father. I... I don't... He I also can't... maintains that you are somehow trying to blackmail him. This... This... This is completely insane. I had nothing to do with this man. He was my dentist. Is that the police? Yeah. What's going on? I've just been raped again, but this time I'm wide awake. Tom Loftus? Yeah. Hi. I'm Roger Knowlton. Who? Dr. Roger Knowlton. The dentist? Yeah. Look, I know this is real uncomfortable, me coming out here like this. What do you want? I came here to tell you the truth, man to man. Look, I feel really bad about this. But when Connie and I had our little fling, she said that you two were separated and getting a divorce. First of all, we were separated for like three weeks. It was no big deal. And second of all, she says you never had a fling. Well, we did. Look, I would have never gotten involved with her if I... She doesn't believe that you have the nerve to come over here and tell me this. I just wanted to apologize, Tom. That's all. I can't believe you even talked to him. It's not like I planned it. You know, what really bugs me is how he knew we were separated. Oh, that's easy. I told him when we were having our affair. Did you ask him how he knew where you worked? No. No, of course not. Don't you get it, Tom? We are dealing with a very dangerous man. Okay, let's assume for a second that you're telling the truth. I am telling the truth! Will you stop it, Connie? I'm not the enemy. Then what are you? I'm angry and I'm confused, and I don't want to have the same argument every day for the rest of our lives. Oh, you think I do? You think I enjoy seeing our marriage fall apart like this? That's why it's time to make some tough choices. Well, it's still early enough to terminate no, this... No, no, abortion is not a choice for me, well, Tom. Well, it should be, Connie. You're carrying another man's baby and you're putting this whole family at risk. All right, you say you were raped? Okay, I believe you. Then why in the hell do you want to have this baby? I don't want to have this baby, but I cannot ever have another abortion, Tom. You know why. That was a long time ago. It's a totally different situation. No, it no, doesn't have no, to be no, like no, that, Tom. Tom. It's going to no, be different. It's just no. Gonna... Abortion is not an option for me, and if you don't understand that, then we don't have a marriage. All right, then. Maybe I should move out a while. Give us some time to think things through. Okay. I was a senior in high school, and Jack was the first serious boyfriend that I'd ever had. We were young. We thought we were in love. And I got pregnant. I couldn't tell my parents because they were very strict, very religious. And Jack just kind of hung me out to dry. I couldn't go to my own doctor. So I took a bus um, to this clinic up in Asheville. I was so scared. It was so cold and it was so impersonal. It's all right. The procedure, I, I just remember thinking that I was gonna die. And then on the way home, I, um, I felt relieved because I thought that it was all behind me. And then I started I started to feel so ashamed and so guilty, and it never went away. And for years, I couldn't, I couldn't go to a baby shower. And sometimes, 
I would, I would hear the sound of a vacuum cleaner. And I would start to cry because I would, I would think that I was back in that clinic. And that's why I can't have another abortion. You know, as bad as all this is, that would be worse. is registered to Isham Security and Investigations. What's that? We're on Isham. He's an ex-cop turned gun for hire. About a half step below a child molester. So I'm right. He must be working for Knowlton. What I can't figure out is why he let you see him. He didn't. I was just lucky. Mm -mm. Ray's right. He wanted you to see him. He wanted to spook you. That's what this is all about. You can't do anything about that? But this guy can rape me and torment me, spy on me? Connie, our hands are tied unless we have more evidence. Real evidence that I could submit to a grand jury. And in the meantime, I can't do anything? I just have to sit back and let this guy try and drive me crazy? Actually, there is something that you could do. What? You could file a formal complaint with the state dental board. By law, they have to investigate. Very good, Doris. That's why they pay her the big bucks. Now look, it's a start. At the very least, it puts the pressure right back on Knowlton. Excuse me, there's a Dr. Beltran from the State Dental Board on line two. Yeah, Barry. Hi. How you doing? Long time no talk. How have you been? Uh-huh. Yeah. Look, Barry, the woman is a head case. Now, she tried to blackmail me, and then she said she was going to ruin my credibility. I mean, the whole thing is a nightmare. You understand it? No, 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 no. I, I, I understand that. Believe me, I do. I, I know that your hands are tied, and I... I yeah. Mm -hmm. Listen. Barry. I really appreciate the call. Okay? All right. Thanks. Bye. Listen, thank you for seeing me on such a short notice. I appreciate it. Ron Isham said you had a problem, and I owe Ron a favor, so... Well, thank you. You know, I've always had this rule to never get romantically involved with one of my patients. I was stupid enough to break that rule, and now I'm paying the price. Did she ever quote you a dollar figure on what it would take to make this go away? Not really. I don't know what she wants. She's crazy. She's like that woman in Fatal Attraction. I don't know if she wants me to marry her or what. First things first. The inquiry at the State Dental Board will take months, and what we have here is the classic he said, she said. She has no proof. So why would it take so long? Well, it's a bureaucracy. The trick is to stop this thing before it ever gets to a formal hearing. You know, something like this hits the paper and my entire practice collapses overnight. Exactly. That's why we should go on the offensive. Hit her fast and hit her hard. So what are my options? Well, you can try and be a gentleman and get screwed, or we can wage an all-out war. As I'm sure you've heard, Doctor. I charge enormous fees for my services, so you might as well get your money's worth. Okay. Hi. Hi. 
Where are the kids? They're out on the swings. Janet's with them. Said they were starving. I told them I'd take them to El Marachi. Good, because I'm going to be stuck here at least another hour. How are you feeling? Okay. You know, I'm a little tired. I was going to tell the kids today that I'm moving out. Don't you think we ought to do that together? I really think it'll be better this way. I'm just going to tell them that I'm moving in with Uncle Rick for a while until you and I can straighten a few things out. You think we can? I don't know. I'll call you later to tell you how it went. Thanks. Constance Loftus? Yes? What is this? It's a summons, ma'am. I can't believe they did this. I know. What does it mean? It means that they're petitioning the court to recognize Nalton as the father of your unborn child. Why? Well, they're saying it's to protect his parental rights. He's going to sue me for joint custody of the baby? Well, they're also saying that if the child is to be put up for adoption, he wants input. And if you decide to keep the baby, he wants visitation rights. What if he wants to raise the baby himself? Well, they would argue that that's within his rights. So now I'm the defendant. Honey, these people know exactly what they're doing. For Norton and his attorney, it's all a big game. See, what they're doing is they're playing with your head. They want you to give up, and they want you to go away. So how do I deal with this? Well, for starters, you need an attorney to help you fight it. You can't do that? It's a civil matter. I can't be involved. I can't afford an attorney. Now look, Connie, I'm sure the rape center will help you find somebody. I know it's infuriating, but just try to take a deep breath. Well, that's easy for you to say. I'm the one who was raped and left with this child, and no one seems to care or is able to do anything about it. Well, I'm going to do something about it, with or without your help. Connie, wait. doing this to me hi have you seen this I don't know what the world's coming to I asked you a question do you think I'm gonna let you get away with this you know, it's funny I was gonna ask you the same thing you should have left well enough alone Connie I didn't appreciate you going to the state dental board yeah, I didn't appreciate being raped you can't prove that you know it. I'll prove it really Connie, by the time my attorneys are finished with you, everyone's going to see you for what you really are. A jilted, frustrated little housewife who's out to ruin a respected profession. How were you? I quit while I was ahead. Ahead of what? What are you talking about? Connie, look. We're both in a no-win situation here. I'm just asking you to be practical, that's all. Practical? Practical. Do you say this has been a big misunderstanding? I call off my lawyers, we all go home and live our lives. My life is never going to be the same. It's the simplest way out. You've been sicker than I thought. Connie. You can't beat me.
What are you doing here? I went over to your house and the babysitter said you were out here. Yeah, I just came out here to clear my head. I've been meaning to call you. I'm sorry about the other day. Get it. You had every reason to be upset. I heard the rape center got you a good lawyer. He seems pretty sharp. And I also heard about your little run-in with Nolte. I know that wasn't the smartest thing to do, but God, I was just so frustrated. You know, I think he's actually convinced himself that we had an affair. He's that crazy. I'm sure he is. But the fact that he's represented by somebody like Susan Saroyan makes him even more dangerous. I was hoping maybe you had some good news. No. I came with some unofficial advice. Why? I hate to see innocent people getting screwed. If you play by the rules here, they're gonna carve you up even more. You see, you're right. Our friend the dentist really is crazy. I bet my house that he's raped before and he would rape again. And all these cats, they're sick. They're creatures of habit. But I thought you said that your office couldn't really do anything. Well, not without just cause. But if another woman, another victim were to come forward, that'd be a whole new ball game. Where do we find another victim? I have an idea. But it's very risky, especially for you. Let's hear it. Are you eating okay? I've been under a lot of stress, Mom. Well, that's not good. I know. I need to talk to you. I need to tell you a lot of things. So come on in and I'll fix you a nice hot cup of tea. I don't understand how they can do something like this. And it's disgusting. You're right. But if I do what the district attorney has suggested, it's going to be painful. Everybody's going to get hurt. What does she want you to do? She thinks my only hope is to find another woman that he's raped. And in order to do that, I have to take my story public. You mean like going on TV? The DA has a friend at the Times, and she thinks that story could end up on television. Everything that happened would be out in the open. Is this what you want to do? But I may have to. What about Sarah and Jessica? I was thinking that I could take maternity leave. Maybe we could move out here for a while. Now, they love the farm, and that way we'd be out of the city. Whatever's best for you, honey. Just tell me what you need. Thanks, Mom. What is... Tom think about all of this? I haven't talked to him yet. What do you think he'll say? I don't know. Please, Tom, talk to me. I don't know what you want me to say. It was bad enough when it was just you and me and the issue of the baby. Now you want to do something that's going to drag Sarah and Jessica into this whole mess? I don't want to do that. That's why I want to move to my mom's. It's a temporary solution, Connie. What happens when they go back to school? What are their friends going to say? Nobody's ever going to look at them or us in the same way again. Do you really think I want to put us all through this, Tom? I have no choice. That's exactly what you said about having the abortion. Okay, well, you're gonna have the baby. Personally, I think it's a very selfish thing. Oh, and I suppose that going public to try and stop a rapist is selfish, too. 
If it was that simple, I'd say no, but it's not. Nobody said you do A and I'll guarantee you B. It's a thousand to one shot. You're just spinning a wheel, hoping, wishing that there's another woman out there that's going to see some kind of story and come forward. It's nuts. In the meantime, you're putting our children at emotional risk. How dare you say that to me? Connie, come back here. You know, Tom, I have just about given up trying to make you understand what the real issue is here. I am not some reckless woman who is willing to sacrifice my children to get revenge. I am the one under attack, Tom. But I am trying as hard as I possibly can not to just give up and die. And if I don't fight back, then I might as well be dead. Well, it's settled then. You'll do what you have to do. I'll go to my mom's this weekend. You can move back into the house. I think you're making a terrible mistake, Connie. I know you do. The preschool teacher said she was raped by Dr. Nolton while recovering from oral surgery. According to Mrs. Loftus, she broke her silence in the hopes another woman who may have been sexually assaulted by Dr. Knowlton will come forward. Now, you said we were going to cut her off at the pass. What is this crap? What is that? Just calm down a second, okay? By throwing the first punch, we're in a better position to control the spin. Spin? What spin? What am I supposed to tell my patients? What do I tell my staff? This kind of thing will ruin me. It'll only ruin you if you panic and say something stupid. Now, I know how to deal with these situations. That's what you're paying me for. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Tell me, what, what do we do? Barry? Yes? Call a news conference for 3 o'clock. Dr. Knowlton and I will be responding to the Times article. And we'll also be filing a defamation suit against Ms. Loftus for these totally false, malicious and really reprehensible accusations. How does this affect your custody suit? It doesn't, but I'll get back to that later. First, I'd like for you to hear from Dr. Knowlton. Doctor? Needless to say, I, uh, I'm just a little nervous. When I woke up this morning, this is the last thing that I expected I would be doing. But uh, with this kind of a nightmare, I don't think there's anybody that can really prepare you for it. To say that I am innocent of all these charges is an understatement. More importantly, I'd like to say to all my friends and uh, my patients that I am the one that feels that he has been raped here. You can certainly question my judgment in terms of being involved with this woman. But when I found out how disturbed she was, I immediately ended the relationship. Hello? Is this the Loftus residence? Yeah. Mr. Loftus? Uh, listen, I would like to get uh, we, your comment. Let me see who that is. Hello? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I would like to get your comment Mr. on what's Loftus, happening with your wife. You who is this? James Hurd. No, I'm not the husband. No one wants to talk to you, okay? We'd like to just ask. Who was that? Oh, a couple of TV people. Told him to take a hike. Uh, I was a reporter on the phone. This is exactly what I didn't want. I warned Connie about this. Hey, come on. Don't blame Connie. I mean, the guy's a psycho. I know the guy's a psycho, but what the hell is he going to do next? That's what I'm afraid of. And the pig, scratching all over, cried, But I thought you said bed bugs don't fight. Well, said the mouse as he ran away, I guess I was wrong. I don't like that mouse. I don't either. Will you tell us another one? Okay, but just one more, because we have a busy day tomorrow. Connie! Telephone! Okay, you go look for one. I'll be right back. Here, here's a book. Oh, look, this one looks good. Okay. Let's see. Okay. I'm going to have to change the number. I must have gotten at least a dozen calls tonight from reporters, television shows. So, Kevin, there's no TV here. The real reason I called is because I wanted to apologize for some of the things I said the other day. I was upset, and I needed to lash out at someone. And I'm sorry. Thanks, Tom. I appreciate that. I really do. Okay, I'll see you Saturday. Yeah. I'll see you.
Is there somebody in the house? I don't know. You stay up here with the girls, okay? Wait. Is it loaded? Just in case. Call the police. Calm down. Oh, come on. What are you doing in here? Quiet down, Christmas. You don't live here. Come on. Out you go. Good night. Later. Okay, Mom, it was just a cat. Excuse me, are you Mr. Loftus? Yeah, but like I told all the other reporters, I have no comment on anything. I'm not a reporter, but I have to talk to your wife, and I think she'll want to talk to me. What are you talking about? I'm talking about the article in the newspaper. Munchkins. You guys milk any cows yet? Yeah, they smell. <laughs> Listen, go inside with Grandma for a couple of minutes. Mommy and I need to talk. And afterwards, I'll take you out for some hot chocolate, okay? Okay. This is a surprise? Looks like your gamble might have paid off. What do you mean? Connie, this is Tracy Price. She read about what happened to you in the newspaper. Yeah? I had to let you know you weren't the first. Roger Knowlton raped me two years ago. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It was right after I first came to town. I'm an actress, and I was up for a big commercial. But my teeth had to be perfect. So my dentist suggested implants, and I was referred to Dr. Knowlton. Because it could be very painful, I was given something called a twilight sedation. An injection combined with gas. That's what he gave me, too. Did it really knock you out? Completely. And then when it started to wear off, I felt really weird. Exactly. I mean, I was so disoriented. I was so high, I didn't know whether I was dreaming or hallucinating. And I didn't put two and two together until the next day when all the drugs had worn off and I realized how sore I was. Did you do anything about it? I had to go back to see him and I sort of brought it up. He told me I was hallucinating and he apologized saying maybe the sedative was too strong. Then he said he'd make an adjustment on my bill. Did he? I never got a bill. And this was a very expensive thing for a struggling actress. So he bought your silence? Yes. Are you willing to take a lie detector test? I guess so. Ray, you want to take Miss Price over? Sure. Thanks, Tracy. 
This way, please. Doesn't this change everything? If she's telling the truth, yes. You see, the key thing is that we can reopen the investigation without being charged with harassment. Congratulations, Connie. We just might nail the good doctor yet. Hmm. I walked into my office. They handed me a subpoena saying that I have to turn over my entire client list for the past seven years. I've already challenged it. Doctor, I keep telling you not to react to every little thing. <sighs> What's this going to do to my custody suit? We have a court date next week. Trust me, the DA will never be able to pull anything together by then. So tell me about this uh, actress they've come up with. I don't have the faintest idea who she is. And what about this business of your fee being waived? It's ridiculous. It's a lie. Good. Because I've already got Ron Isham checking her out. And as you know, if she's got any skeletons in her closet, Ron will find them. Excuses they come up with not to go to sleep. How are you feeling? I am so tired. I don't remember anything like this with Sarah or Jessica. Well, you're five years older, and look at all the strain you've been under. How are you holding up? It's a drag. You were right to come out here. In the neighborhood at work. People look at me like I'm a freak. I thought about that last night. Do you think anything is ever going to be the same? It can't. It's like a terrorist put a bomb in our living room. That's what I was always trying to get you to understand. Okay, okay, I mean, what do you want me to say? I was stupid? I didn't have any legitimate concerns? Tom! How many times can I say I'm sorry, Connie? Tom, I didn't mean that. I mean, I... I, I know. Let's be honest. It's gonna take a long time to sort through all this mess. Uh, I gotta go. Why don't you stay? It's such a long drive. Not tonight. I'll call you tomorrow. against Dr. Your Honor, no there never was a criminal investigation. There were only wild allegations. My client has never denied his involvement with this married woman or that he's the father of their unborn child. The issue here today is does my client have rights as a biological parent and should those rights be recognized by this court? With all due respect, Your Honor, the issue is my client's rights as a woman who has been raped not to be victimized a second time by this specious and cynical attempt to legitimize Dr. Knowlton's really, crime. Really, Your Honor, I find it unconscionable that Mr. Block can just irresponsibly toss around the word rape without... That's enough, Counselor. Now, the issue before us today is quite simple. Should this court even consider if Dr. Knowlton is entitled to any paternal rights? I think the answer is obviously yes. Therefore, I am denying the defense motion for dismissal. And this court is adjourned. Mrs. Loftus, how do you feel about the judge's ruling? Of course, we're uh, disappointed by the judge's ruling, but it wasn't totally unexpected. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, but that's all we can say. Excuse me. I'm glad that's over with. How'd it go? I'd say we had a pretty good day. Then it's going to get even better. I also got one hell of a video. Look, I know this is frustrating, but the worst thing we could do is rush the investigation. I thought that with Tracy's testimony, you have enough probable cause. Yeah, maybe for an indictment, but a conviction is another matter. We still don't have any physical evidence. I'm pregnant. I think that's pretty physical. Yeah, and Dr. Knowlton says you two had an affair. Can't you do like a sting operation or something? 
Look, I mean, you say yourself that these guys can't stop. They have to keep doing it. Yeah, but not with the same person. Come on, he's way too smart for that. I don't mean me. I mean somebody else. I just think we have to do something. Okay. Where are we going? See a friend of mine. Remember the time we used surveillance cameras to catch that sleazy chiropractor out in Meadow Hills? Yes. Okay, well, we never would have gotten a conviction if we hadn't caught him on tape. But what you're talking about here is a lot different. No, it's not. In that case, you had a suspect who had no clue he was even under investigation. But you also had a professional with a compulsive need to molest his patients. And here you have someone already represented by a ruthless media-savvy defense attorney. Come on. Don't tell me you're scared of Susan Saroyan. I'm not scared, Doris. I'm practical. One screw-up, one honest mistake, and I'm the one who signed the warrant. Does that mean you won't even consider it? No, it means I have to think about it. It was very nice meeting you. Thank you. We'll talk on Monday. I need this. May you speak to Connie, please? This is Connie. Oh, hi. I didn't recognize your voice. This is Roger. What are you doing calling me here? How did you get this number? Connie, before you hang up, I suggest you calm down and listen to what I have to say. It seems your star witness is quite the actress. I'm sitting here right now watching a movie of hers. I think you'd be shocked to see what she's doing. I find it extremely offensive myself. We're not talking NC-17 here. We're talking triple X. This is down and dirty stuff. Connie, I... I don't want to have to show this to your friends at the DA's office. Okay? I mean, this witness has absolutely no credibility. What do you want from me? What do I want? I want you to face the facts. You can never win, and you can never beat me. Go to hell. Damn you! What did Tracy say? She said she made the movie when she first came to town. She had a sleazy boyfriend who convinced her it was a good way to break in. What's the DA think? She thinks she'll be destroyed on the stand. It's so depressing. Hey. <laughs> I can't do it anymore, Paul. I'm too tired to fight. He's gonna win! He's gonna get away with everything! <laughs> you were right. You were right. I should have. I should have given up. And I should have cut off all the losses. Well, do this to yourself. You're the one who was right all along, not me. You fought too hard to quit now. Don't you see? This is not about who's right. And who's wrong? This is about winning and losing. And I'm drowning, Tom. Connie. Connie, what about this business with the surveillance cameras? No, we don't know what the judge is going to say now. And the DA still thinks that Tracy was raped. Yeah. And you believe it, right? Yeah. So why are you throwing in the towel? Because I'm tired. And I haven't had a lot of support. All I'm saying is I still think you can beat him. Daddy, when are we going ice skating? In a minute, sweetheart.
Okay, here's the good news. He said he'd sign the order to let us put up cameras in Olin's office. Great. Hold on. Also hit us with two major restrictions, and I have no idea how we're going to make it work. What kind of restrictions? Well, the only patients we can videotape are undercover police officers. Why is that? He said that videotaping unsuspecting patients would be an invasion of their privacy. He also set a time limit. We only got ten working days once those cameras are installed. Hold on a minute. The big problem is how do we find our patient? Like that patience. And we only have 10 days. We need more than one piece of bait. Well, what about women vice officers? And don't they go undercover all the time? <clears throat> well, it'd be easy if all we wanted to do is catch them with a prostitute. But here, we need a good-looking patient who also happens to need some serious oral surgery. Ray's right. This thing's a real long shot. You know, I've really got to make one-on-one -on -one calls with this thing, too. I mean, by the time I go through Metro, the Sheriff's Department, the suburbs... This could really take weeks. Best case. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Doesn't your insurance require that you get approval for any major medical or dental work? Yeah. So we go to the police dental files and see how many oral surgeries are pending. Now, say there are 20 cases in the county. There are bound to be a couple of women that Knowlton would find attractive. Attractive police women? That's a mighty tall order. Oh, thank you, Detective Tom Cruise. Now, Doris, don't get your feminist back up. I'm just trying to inject some reality here. Well, that's a great idea, Connie. If you have to decide to quit teaching, come work for me. You've got a job. It is a great idea. But believe me, you never want to go to work for her. Hey, it's Ray Boyle. Hi, Ray. Well, the good news is I found the perfect candidate. She's a 23-year-old rookie. She's really good-looking. And she's scheduled to have something called third molar surgery early next week. What's the bad news? She doesn't want to do it. <sighs> with you. I just don't know if I'm ready for something like this. Believe me, I know there's no comparison, but I felt exactly the same way the first time that I was going to teach my own class. I was so scared. I just, I just wanted to run away. And then I thought, this is what you studied for, trained for. Don't sell yourself short. You can handle this. It's not just that. You're expecting he's going to touch me. Maybe take my clothes off. That just freaks me out. And I'm not even going to know it's happening. I'll have a team in an empty office right next door monitoring his every move. The second he crosses the line, we'll move in. I'm going to be there, too. After what this guy did to me, I promise you, I will not let anyone compromise your dignity. Pretty bad, huh? Well, believe me, I've seen a lot worse. My friend at the bank said this kind of thing can really hurt. <laughs> Well, it can, but our specialty is pain control. You see, we use a state-of-the-art anesthesia that pretty much eliminates all feeling during the operation. And afterwards? Well, afterwards, most patients feel like they've had routine dental work. So, do you have any other questions you want to ask me? No, I don't think so. Okay. But I am going to see one more doctor before I make up my mind. Good. Second opinions are always good. But if I were you, I wouldn't hold off too much longer on my decision because you do have a problem here that needs immediate attention, okay? 
Thank you, Doctor. My pleasure. Yes. Susan Saroyan's office is calling. They say it's very important. Okay, could you get her on the phone for me, please? Yes, sir. She's on line one. Yes. Hi. I've got some very good news. Is that what her lawyer said? He said he wanted to explore all of his clients' options. I told him, here's our bottom line. She has to drop the state dental board complaint and then publicly acknowledge that her pregnancy is a result of a consensual relationship. In return, we'll drop the defamation and the paternity suits. Do you think they'll go for it? Of course. They know they're dead in the water. I'm just surprised it took this long. This is great news. Um, I guess you're worth your uh, extravagant fee after all, right? <laughs> Thank you. Bye. suction on the upper right. Good. Okay, Leandra, I think that's gonna do it. There he goes. There hmm? he goes. Right there. Waving dope in front of a junkie. Oh, look, 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 look what he's doing. 
Tony, stand by. I'd give her about another half hour and then I'd bring her out of it, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. So close. Stand down, Tony. I can't believe it. If that nurse didn't interrupt, you would have kept going. But what about all the touching and rubbing my breasts? At the very most, it was unethical behavior. A shark like Susan Saroyan would tear us apart in court. She'd say there was some legitimate medical reason for what he did and that the real issue here is entrapment. Trust me, what we got, it's not what we need. Could I have done anything different? Oh, no, you were great. Don't even think that. You all right? I hope he knew what he was doing. I got the shooting pain. Under normal circumstances, what would you do in a situation like this? What do you mean? You'd call the doctor, right? I guess so. An after-hours emergency call. With no nurses to interrupt. Right. I'm so sorry I had to come out like this. Oh, it's no problem. It's a part of my job. Come on in. The eagle has landed. I'm in so much pain. It's like there's a, an exposed nerve or something. Okay, well, I'll take care of the pain, then we'll solve the problem, okay? Just cut this little stitch here, and everything will be okay. Go. I don't know how I could have missed this before. We need to give him a little more rope.
Tony, Tony, be ready to roll. All right, we're on. She's okay. Hey. I better get downstairs now, huh? Okay, I just need a minute. Hey. Congratulations. Defendant's attorney to say that Dr. Knowlton is not a flight risk or threat to the community is a joke. It's an absolute joke. In addition to the videotape evidence, we have affidavits from three former patients stating that Dr. Knowlton sexually abused them. No bail, no matter how high, could be justified here. This man is a sexual predator. He cannot and he will not stop. On behalf of Constance Loftus and all the women he has victimized and violated, we urge the court to reject this motion. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Cantori. In light of the evidence presented, I agree with the people and hereby deny bail. The defendant will be returned to county jail and held there until he's tried. This court is adjourned. I'm gonna stick it to him every chance I get. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you. Thank you to all of you. Hey, by the way, Jill, you still having problems with your teeth? You know what? On top of everything else, I think this guy was a lousy dentist. <laughs> wow. Still planning on moving back home this weekend? Yeah. Kids can't wait to see their friends again. What happens now? What about the baby? Well, I guess I can finally start the adoption process. You know, it's okay with me if you want to keep the baby. I've done a lot of thinking about this, and the baby is part of you. Thank you. But I've done a lot of thinking about it, too. And I think adoption is best for everybody. What about us? We have a shot at working things out? Yeah. If you finish the drywall in the hallway. <laughs> it's a deal. <laughs> sit next to your sister because mommy and I have something very important to talk to you about. We're not going to move again, are we? No, nothing like that. You see, mommy went to the doctor today and found out that she's going to have a baby. Which means that we're going to have either a little brother or a little sister. Now, that's going to change a few things around here when the baby comes. But we still have a little wild plan. I'll get it. So what do you think? Would you rather have a little brother or a little sister? Sister! Okay, but don't tell Daddy because he's got his heart set on a little boy. You sure? Why do you want a sister instead of a brother? Because sisters are nicer than brothers. I oh, they are. Who was that? Mm, we'll talk about it later. Okay, Munchkin, it's time for a hot bath and then bed. Come on, let's go. Okay. <laughs> Be 
meet you there. <laughs> I'll, I'll meet you. No, I'll meet you. Hey, Mom. Hey, Dad. Yeah. I'm gonna go kiss them goodnight. They're fine. We need to talk. What's the matter? That phone call that came in earlier tonight, it was from the urologist who performed my vasectomy. Guess what he said? What? There's no problem with my vasectomy. It was 100% effective. That's impossible. He did test, Connie. I saw him this afternoon. There's no sperm in my semen. He said I could not be the father of your child. What the hell is going on here? I don't know. I'm either your test is wrong or I'm not really pregnant. There's no other possible explanation. No, there's not. doing here? Are the kids all right? The kids are fine. Is there some place that we can talk in private? Uh, yeah, sure, in here. Something happened at the doctor's today? Honey, what is it? You're, you're scaring me. What's going on? Guess what? What? I'm pregnant. No, there's no way. Yep. Well, how could that have happened? That's what I asked the doctor. And she said that there's obviously something wrong with your vasectomy. Well, they told me it was 99.9% .9 effective. Yeah, well, we got the one-tenth of one percent. Well, this is, of all the things in the world, to screw up. It was an accident. There's no point in beating ourselves up about it. So what are we going to do? I guess we're going to have a baby. Maybe it's a boy. You always said you wanted a son. Oh, hey. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. It's just such a shock. I know. But we'll get through it, okay? Just found out she's pregnant. Pregnant? I thought you had all the lead taken out of your pencil. So did I. Listen, tell the chief I went home sick. And where are you going? Just cover for me, okay? Spoon. S P O O N. Store. S T O R E. That's my girl. How's she doing? 10 out of 10. Great. Where's Jessica? Here. <laughs> Come here, sweetheart. Oh. 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 Um, I'll be right back. Uh, go on. My mommy's right. Eat something. Up. What's wrong? I don't know. Connie, are you all right? I'll be okay. I think I have a touch of stomach flu. When do you think you're gonna fix the drywall in the hallway? As soon as I get a check of free time. How about the new molding over the door? Right after I finish the drywall. <laughs> You spent $128 at a shoe store? I had to buy the girls new sneakers, remember? What are they, gold-plated? That's what they cost nowadays. The price of things, it's outrageous. Mm. You're warm. I just took some aspirin. I want you to go see a doctor. You haven't been sleeping well, bad dreams, now this. I think it's just one of those 24-hour things. Don't be stubborn. Got a half a day tomorrow. I want you to go see a doctor. 
Okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> Connie, that was quick. You know why I've been nauseous and not sleeping? You're pregnant. What? You're about two months along, so you should be delivering around July 4th. Well, that's impossible. Tom had a vasectomy after Jessica was born. Oh, well, it may be impossible, but you are pregnant. This can't be right. I'll be right back. Ah, Miss Scarlett, you sure look pretty today. So, are you going to do a prom or something? No, we're taking yearbook pictures at school today. Hey, Tom, how come we never had teachers who look like this? Flirting with my wife again. No, just, just make an observation. <laughs> See you tonight, okay? Come on, we're going to be late. You really do look pretty. Yeah. I'm going to be home late, remember. All right. Okay, let's start over. We're going to do wheels on the bus from the beginning again. And I want to see you move your hands this time, John. The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. Um, I'm going to step outside for a minute, okay? Because I get some fresh air. Janet, can you take over? So Bernie and his guys spent all week putting in this custom insulation. The owner shows up and says the specs are all wrong. I hate this stuff. Me too. Oh, come on. Have a little bit of it. It's good for you. Do you have to replace it? Bernie already started ripping it out. I don't know who will end up paying for it. Here, I'll take some of that. to death. Oh, you can't do that, you know? I couldn't sleep, so I was going to do some wash, but you're kind of in the way, you know? So I want you to go upstairs. Go on. Go on. You can't stay with me. Go have some breakfast. Go on. Cue ball, what have you done now? It's okay. It's okay. You just, you just had a bad dream. Oh, my God. What happened? Um, there was this, um... I don't know. I don't know. It was, it was so real. You're starting to scare me. This is like the third time this month. I know. I'm sorry. Daddy? Mommy, are you all right? Oh, yeah. I'm okay. I'm okay. Mommy just had a bad dream. It's okay. Let's go back to bed, okay? 